Somebody says, well, I'm waiting for a raise. I'm telling you it's easier to climb than to wait for a raise. Why not just become more valuable rather than wait? I'm telling you that's the key to all good things. Becoming more valuable. Why would we pay somebody $400 an hour? They've become more valuable to the marketplace. See how this works? I'm telling you this stuff is so easy. This is America. This is a ladder. How far is it from four to five? I'm telling you it's not far. Four to five dollars an hour? If you work for McDonald's, haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. If you whistle while you haul out the trash, they'll pay you five dollars an hour. I'm telling you. You'll get an extra dollar just for a good attitude. Yay, McDonald's. Wear the hat. It's incredible. Five dollars. And then you just keep becoming more valuable, more valuable, more valuable. I got a telephone call five years ago. Company said, we're ready to expand internationally. We need some help. I was sort of semi-retired. Right. Looking for the next exotic beat. They said, no, no, Mr. Rohn, we got a project for you. Right. Going to expand internationally. We could use your help. Next little while, we'll add some millions to your fortune, make it worth your while. I said, okay. I thought later, isn't that interesting that they called me? My second thought was, of course they'd call me. Who else would they call? I mean, you know, I can get the job done. Now, how come? How come I got a telephone call worth a million? I had become valuable. Now, I'm a farm boy from Idaho. I was raised in obscurity. One year of college, and I thought I was thoroughly educated. Made all kinds of mistakes galore. At age 25, the creditors are calling me saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I got pennies in my pocket. I got nothing in the bank. I'm behind on my promises. How come I get a telephone call five years ago and it's worth a million? I changed. I changed. I turned my life around. Is it possible to become worth millions? Speaking economically, now there's a lot of values to become, but let's just talk economics. Is it possible to become that valuable? And the answer is, of course, of course. Now, let me give you the secret. Shelf said, here's the secret, Mr. Rohn. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Once I got that, it turned my life around. Learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. <laughs> if you would have known me at age 25, you would have said, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. If you'd have known me, you'd have said that. I'm the guy, I don't mind coming a little bit early, staying a little bit late, I don't mind that. You'd have said, well, Jim Rohn's a hard worker. You say, well, how come he's got pennies in his pocket and nothing in the bank and behind on his promises? Well, I was a hard worker, but I was working hard on my job, not on myself. I'm telling you, if you'll learn that simple little principle and start the process today, late as tomorrow, I'll give you tonight to think it over. <laughs> And start this whole process of personal development, work on yourself, make yourself more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, you can so dynamically change your income and economics is the least of the values that you can start earning in terms of equity. If you'll start working harder on yourself than you do on your job, work hard on yourself and develop the skill, work hard on yourself and develop the grace, all of the stuff necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace. I'm telling you, your whole life can explode into change. Promotions, no problem. Becoming more valuable valuable to the company, I'm telling you no problem. Money, no problem. Economics, no problem. Future, no problem. If you just go to work on the right thing, not get things out there to change. Don't try to change the seed. Don't change the soil. Don't change the sunshine. Don't change the rain. Don't change the mix of season. Let the miracle of everything that's available work for you and start working on the inside. Work on your philosophy. Work on your attitude. Work on your personality. Work on your language. Work on the gift of communication. Work on all of your abilities. And if you'll start making those personal changes, I'm telling you, everything will change. Now, let me give you another scenario on personal development. It's called the four major lessons in life to learn. Before we get to the four major lessons in life to learn, let me give you a key phrase for your notes. Here it is. Life and business is like the seas. Life and business is like the seas. Frank Sinatra sings, life's like the seas. Now, here's one of the key phrases that changed my life. Starting at age 25, you can see this whole scenario. Personal development for me began. I've never been the same since. Here's the next key phrase. You cannot change the seas, but you can change. You can't change but you can change yourself. My best hope, right? When I'm 25 years old, my best hope was to go through the day with my fingers crossed saying, I sure hope things will change. I sure hope things will change. It seemed to be my only way for my life to get better if things would change. Here's what I discovered. It isn't going to change. It isn't going to change. I did a seminar one time for Standard Oil executives and management in Honolulu, now known as Chevron. 
and we're talking economics one day around the conference table. And one of them said to me, Mr. Rohn, you know some fairly important people around the world. You have a chance to travel internationally. Can you tell us what you think the 80s are going to be like? Now, you can tell how far back this goes. I said, what do you think the 80s are going to be like? And I thought for a moment, and I said, gentlemen, I do know the right people. And I do have some experience, I think I can tell you. So they all leaned in a little closer, and I said, gentlemen, based on the people I know, and based on the best of my own experience, I think in the 80s, it's going to be about like it's always been. Aren't you glad you came today? I mean, that's inside stuff. I don't just spread that around everywhere. It's going to be about like it's always been. It isn't going to change. To hope that it'll change is called whistling in the wind, being so naive, hoping for something that isn't going to occur. I can give you the shortest history lesson that you can imagine in one sentence. What describes human history on the spinning planet the last six and a half thousand years? Let me describe it for you in one sentence. Here's human history in one sentence. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. That's about as simple as you can put it. And opportunity mixed with difficulty isn't going to change. The man says, well, if it isn't going to change for the future, if it isn't going to change in the 90s, how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. And if you will change, everything will change for you. Your bank account will change, your income will change, your future will change, the ability to acquire your dreams will change, it'll all change if you will. And now let's go through the scenario of the season. Life in business is like the seasons. Let's cover them. Here's number one, major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to handle the winters. You say, well, Mr. Rohn, a lot of this stuff is fairly obvious. That's true. Just need somebody like me just to come along and remind us. This is what this is called today, a reminding session. I got no new truth for you to discover. This is all old stuff. We just need to hear it again. Somebody get on our case a little bit, right? We all need that. Here's number one lesson. Learn how to handle the winters. That's obvious. The winters come right after falls. And pray tell how often? Every year, according to written history, for the last six and a half thousand. To cross your fingers and say, I hope, I hope, I hope it doesn't come. I'm telling you, we call that naive. See, how many of you have children? Raise your hands. Me too. I got Max and Bella at home. You ever notice when you go to a Little League game when they were playing their sport, how there's all those kids on the field, but who do you see? You see yours. It's almost like the other kids are barely there. You're like, yeah, they're cute kids. Where's mine? Right? Don't you do that? Or you go to a play at Christmas time, the Christmas pageant for your daughter or your son, and all the kids are up there singing. Who are you watching sing the whole time? Your little baby. And how much you hope and believe their life is going to be special and great, and you want them to be happy and fulfilled and confident, don't you? Yes? I'm going to give you a secret. Your kids look at you like that. Your children look at you. All they see is you. They don't see the other parents. They don't see the other people. They look at you. They want you to be happy, you to be special, you to live your dreams. They want that for you. In fact, they want it more because what you do opens the gates for them in their minds to think about what they can do. So you have an even bigger responsibility. You can't tolerate it. See, you can't go to your children and say, you can be whatever you want. Because what if they look back at you and say, well, daddy, if I can be whatever I want, if I can do anything, how come you haven't? How come you and mommy haven't? You don't want them to think that about you. We've all gotten to an age, haven't we, in our lives where we figured out we love our parents dearly, but we figured out who they are, haven't we? Good, bad, and indifferent. Your children are going to figure out who you are. They're going to grow to an age where they know. Maybe they already have. And you know what? This is your shot to change it. They're always going to love you, but they can be proud of you. Your kids are going to have heroes. Why not that hero be you? At any age, you could turn that around. At any time, you could turn that around. I want to challenge you to do that. I want this to fill you. I want you to think about it. I want it to move you. I want it to energize you. And when you get weak, when someone quits, when an appointment cancels, when some Yahoo tells you you shouldn't be doing this and you're not good enough or there's something better or whatever they tell you, you remember why you're doing it. I want to sew it into you right now. I want you to know why you're doing this. And it's those people. Life will only give you what you'll fight for. I'm going to tell you a story. I've told it only one other time. <laughs> this sort of illustrates the point. Kind of. My dad, how many of you have a dad that's kind of a dog? Like it just, a, he's a dude. And he got dads like that? My dad, my dad's an intense dude. Unless my dad's struggling with another bout of cancer right now. He's not the same guy that I grew up with, but I'm one of those guys. I've seen my dad in a couple scrapes. You know what I'm talking about? How many of you know what I'm talking about? I got one of those dads. My dad's a tough dude. My dad was a hockey player. By age 50, you can still have five world championships. But you got to be willing to get under some stress. See, stress is necessary. It's like, I, I can't believe what Bishop was talking about because I had prepared this whole thing. And it's just amazing how he is, man. God be doing. See, that's what I've learned. God cold. He do. He do. He, he tricky with it. He, 
He got moves you won't even. He three of the things I was gonna talk about, he talked about. Now I'm got I got scared to talk, cause you know I mean I, who I'm a, I'm up here you know following the greatest preacher of all time with similar subject matter, but I have a different take on it, cause I had a different walk. So you see the the part he was talking about that seed. See I'm a seed. I really am. I, see, but a seed has to be planted. A seed got to have dirt put on top of it. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. But guess what? Logically, in my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though, see, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt, dirt gives you the push through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. And you get dirt in a lot of different ways. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't gonna make it. It's somebody sharing information about you that ain't true. That everybody get dirt put on them. But see, when you getting put under that stress, please know God is always working. Kirk Franklin's song, God is always working, so I smile. Because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. Stress, see, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. Because Oh, see, soil has nutrients in it. What the nutrients, when people are talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, backbiting, stealing from you, talking about you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. They are building character. You got character now. Cause now, and now the seed, if they put a camera under the ground, you'd have seen the seed sprout open and start coming through the dirt because the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself. Yeah. You know, if you don't really want to be, everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. All them potatoes, collard greens, they was underground one time. <laughs> them apple trees, they was underground one time. So they had to prove they self. See, you want to be successful. Successful, well, then you got to prove yourself. You got to push through the dirt. You got to come up through here. You got to come out. Then you sprout. And then Bishop say, then you become a tree. Next thing you know, you got fruit. So when you under stress, take the stress for what it is. Don't get fooled. Don't just think, I don't know, man, Lord must not mean for it to be. What you tripping for? What you talking about? How you think you're going to be a plant, a tree, a flower, a bush, and ain't no stress? How you going to get to be that without no dirt? Didn't they do Jesus? How you figure you supposed to get up out of here? He was pretty perfect. We ain't even perfect. See, I expect dirt now. I expect people to talk about me. Matter of fact, I look forward to it now. Do your thing, because if I can weather what happened to me and my family earlier, you can bring whatever you got now. There's some more stuff going around now that's about to happen. Bring it. Because now I have developed a character that is stress. I have stress soil, enough dirt on me that has provided me with nutrients. So now let me help you understand how hard it is to be successful. It's very difficult because more people would be successful if it were easy. Right. It's like doing a hundred push-ups. You know, the average person can't do a hundred push-ups. That, now some of you in here, you can't do a hundred push-ups. <laughs> I just looked and went, come on Steve. But because of the fact that it's difficult, you're not going to try? You say you have a relationship with the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh, took 5,000 people, had two fish yeah. and five loaves of bread, fed all of them. No. You don't want to try the 100 push up. <laughs> they take rocket ships, take them to the moon, orbit, bring them back, land it in the same place it took off from. You don't want to try the 100 push ups? Right. You don't really think you can do the 100 push ups? I want you to look at something right now. Think of some major goal you want, or maybe it's one you're already working on, and you have experienced a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. You've experienced a lot of disappointment. Maybe you've already given up, and maybe you just need a little fire, a little encouragement to get back in the game again. Here's what I want you to look at. 
There are winners, there are losers, and there are people who have not discovered how to win. And all they need is some coaching. All they need is some help and assistance, just a little support. All they need is some insight or different strategy or plan of action to make some adjustments that will open up the key to a whole new future for them, that will give them access to the unlimited power that they have within themselves. That's all that they need. So what I want you to do is, is think about something you want for you, that's real for you, that's important for you, that will give your life some special meaning and power. And I don't even want you to say, I can do that. I don't want you to assume that. See, five years ago, when I started out in this area, I would not have been able to make the mental leap that I would be up to where I am right now. I don't want you to begin to just psych yourself out. No, no. I want you to be able to say something to yourself that will enable you to maintain a level of integrity with yourself. That when you say this, even when you face tremendous setbacks, it, it will be a benchmark to keep you in the game, to keep you moving forward and experimenting and readjusting your strategy and your plan of action continuously, looking for ways to win. So what is that something? When you got an idea, you want to move on. You might not have the money. You might not have the education. You might not have the support or the resource you need. What is that something that can keep us going that will enable us to act on our dream? What's one of those keys that will begin to help us to discover the secrets to our dream? Here's what I want you to repeat after me, please, with power and conviction. Say, it's possible. It's all I want you to do when you look at your dream. You say to yourself every day, it's possible. You say that every day to yourself, it's possible. Because what does that do? See, it begins to change your belief system. See, the way in which we operate, ladies and gentlemen, it's a manifestation of what we believe, what's possible for us. Whatever you've done up to this point, all that it really is, is a duplication, it's a reproduction of what you believe subconsciously that you deserve and what's possible for your life. Most people operate out of their personal history, out of their memory, things they've done, things they've experienced, things they've seen, things that they have observed. What I'm suggesting that you operate out of a larger vision of yourself. I want you to see yourself doing what you want to do, experiencing what you want to experience it, having what you want to have, doing what it is that gives your life some meaning and value. Operate out of your imagination, not your memory. Because whenever you look at where you want to go, I'm wanting to warn you, you will have some conversation back here after you go through the data that you've experienced and life saying you can't do it. And so what you want to begin to do is ignore that inner conversation. Well, most people, ladies and gentlemen, when something happens to them, what they do is they begin to believe that that's the way it is. That's the way it's always been. And they can't see the possibility of it being any different. Example, before April 1954, the common belief, the universal belief, because it had been tried again and again and again and people had failed, the belief was that man was not physically capable of breaking the four-minute barrier that he could not run a mile in less than four minutes. That was the belief on the planet. It had never been done. But here's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Roger Bannister came along and he broke the four-minute barrier. Now here's what's significant about that. Since that time, up to this day, over 20,000 people have done it, including high school kids. What changed? 20,000 people. What changed? Here's what happened when they got on the track. They knew it had been done. And because they knew it had been done, there was a new belief about this barrier, about this goal that was unreachable. And those 20,000 people got in a race believing, knowing in their heart that someone had done it, that it's possible that they could do it. I have learned to work harder on yourself that do and on job once can around life work hard on yourself then you do on your job he said if you work hard on jo your job you will make a living if you work hard on yourself can make founder if you wonder have no me at
age 25 would have said you have no me you had said i am the guy i don't mind commit a little bit early stay a little bit later i don't mind work harder jim ron work harder and pockets nothing in the work and in the bank and behind on the promise well i was hard and was broken working on hard not yourself i am telling you if you learn that simple little pantalette and start the necessary to today the tomorrow i will give tonight to thank it over and start this whole process of personal development work on yourself make yourself more valuable to the marketplace i am telling you can so dynamically change your income and increase in your last of the value that you can learn in term of equity you will start working harder on yourself than you can do on a job work hard yourself and develop the skill yourself and all of the necessary to become more valuable to the marketplace thank you for watching like share and subscribe